production is a sham. My guest this morning, Democratic Congressman Gerald Nadler, Chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, and Republican Senator Ted Cruz of Texas. Where's Chloe? Power politics. The Democratic okay. candidates getting tough. Is this guy going to yell at us for going on this trail? Are we supposed to? Are we supposed to push it down or something for? I'm suspending our campaign today. The latest on a wild and wide open race. Also, our angry country. Why one congressman says our politics has left him soul weary. Joining me for insight and analysis are NBC News White House correspondent Kristen Walker, Rob Acosta, national political reporter for the Washington Post. Yeah, if we get everything organized and add that to everything else, I mean, welcome to Sunday. It's Meet the Press. From NBC News in Washington, the longest running show in television history. This is Meet the Press. Make people know where to find information. Good Sunday morning. Given the constant storm of controversy and disruption that has defined the norm-breaking Trump presidency, it's easy to forget what a historic moment we've all just experienced. With Speaker Nancy Pelosi's announcement this week, it has become all but certain that Donald Trump will become just the third American president in history to be impeached. That much we know. Or think we do, anyway. At the same time, there is so much we don't know. We don't know how many articles of impeachment the Democrats will draw against President Trump. Or what they will cover. We don't know what Ohio State's time. number two. Remember, we expected Senate LSU. hearings at least. LSU. A nominee named Merrick Garland. Those never happen. We don't know whether Senate Republicans will be able to muster 51 vote majorities at key moments as the trial progresses, if it does happen. And we don't know the extent of the federal investigation into Rudy Giuliani's activities or how close it could get to the president himself. Most important with impeachment, a possible government shutdown. She's so fat. The season, followed by a full-on brutal presidential campaign, all in a deeply divided What a beautiful day. We don't know how well the country can handle the stress test we're all about to face. I am asking our chairman to proceed with articles of impeachment. After her historic announcement on impeachment, a murky road ahead. I'm Come on. That. Nobody knows what's going on. I haven't answered your question because there is no answer at this point. On Wednesday, Senator McConnell released the 2020 Senate schedule with January missing. A dramatic nod to a possible impeachment trial. The only thing I know for sure is that nobody knows what we're doing in January yet. In the House, Democrats are still debating the scope of the impeachment charges. With all due respect, I'm not going to answer one charge. We're not writing the, the articles of impeachment here tonight. There is broad support among Democrats for articles. Uh oh, there's Chloe. More of the president's conduct on Ukraine, but a divide over how broad an additional. This is hard. And reluctance by many oh, moderate members to expand the scope. Well, we can try. I mean, that's the hardest part. Here's what I would say to that. I was against going through with impeachment previous to this Ukraine matter. I think we need to stay focused on Ukraine. Well, we do expect to lose some, uh, and that's why I say it is a conscious vote. For months, the president and his allies have complained that Mr. Trump deserves legal representation in the inquiry. We don't have rights to lawyers, not giving us lawyers. He doesn't let us have lawyers. We had no representation. But on Friday, White House counsel Pat Cipollone made it clear the president will not mount a defense in the House or even send lawyers to the Judiciary Committee's hearing on Monday. Well, I don't know. I know this, that the impeachment thing is a total hoax. Another unknown, the length and scope of any Senate trial. The White House has signaled that if there is a, a trial, winter wonderland. wants to deflect attention from his conduct to a wish list of Democratic witnesses. Joe Biden, Hunter Biden, Adam Schiff, and the whistleblower. The whistleblower, Adam Schiff, uh, Joe Biden, Hunter Biden. Witnesses like the whistleblower, like Adam Schiff, like Hunter and Joe Biden. In the end, though... you got to get 51 votes, but what point does 51 people say, I've heard enough, I'm ready to vote? So, who knows? Senate Republicans Come on. will need the support of several of their own who have been willing to break with the president in the past and of Republicans up for re-election in competitive races. Perhaps not helpful in winning over Senate Republicans who are on the fence, the president's personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, who is at the center <laughs> of the scandal, <laughs> spent this week in Ukraine. Well, I just know he came back from someplace and he's going to make a report, I think, to the attorney general and to Congress. He says he has a lot of good information. 
I have not spoken to him about that information. And joining me now is the chair of the House Judiciary Committee, Democrat Jerry Nadler of New York. Chairman Nadler, welcome back to the press. Good morning. Good to be here. Okay. This week, uh, what does this look like? Is this the beginning of the drafting of the articles? And is that what this week is going to be about? Well, this week is going to start with tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, uh, Monday, we're going to have uh, the report from the Intelligence Committee. Uh, uh, examination of their uh, of their people by by both sides, and uh, after that, we'll have decisions to make about drafting articles and where it goes. Explain how that decision process works. Is, there, is this going to be um, in a committee hearing that we'll all watch, or are you going to make these decisions behind closed doors to say, okay, we've decided to do abuse of power here, bribery there, and you know how? Give well, me a little sense of what it looks like. There'll be a lot of consultations, I assume, between members of the committee, between with House leadership, uh, with, with members of the House. We'll have to make those decisions. Uh, Come on. Bring articles of impeachment, presumably, before the committee. Is Come on, Chloe. Later in the week. Chloe. Have you have an idea of how many articles you, you, you think we're going to drop? Well, you're not ready yet. I'm, I'm, to be I, I, I'm not ready to decide that. And it's, it's not just my decision, obviously. Is this but, the speaker? Is this a speaker... You may come up with recommendations, and she ultimately says, do this, not that. Well, she'll, she'll have a role, as, as, as may other members of the caucus. Uh, but the decisions have to be made based on, on everything we've learned till, till now and based on what we hear tomorrow. But remember, um, some of these things are very clear at this point. Uh, there is overwhelming evidence, uh, uncontested by the Republicans, that the president put himself above the country, that the president uh, sought foreign assistance in, in elections, sought to cover it up, um, uh, completely defied uh, uh, participation in, in the congressional investigation um, uh, in order to hide his role, that he sought foreign assistance for the next election. What is that a definition of? Is that an abuse of power allegation that you're describing? Well, there are several. Bribery allegations. What allegation are you describing there? Well, certainly abuse of power. It might be abuse of con uh, uh, the destruction of Congress and, and is not uh, uh, cooperating. You know, he refused every single document. He told everybody in the executive branch, do not cooperate, do not answer, do not testify. No president has ever done anything like that. So th this is a, a defiance of the role of Congress uh, given by the by the Constitution for impeachment. But again, he put himself above the country. He sought to uh, uh, get foreign interference uh, against the integrity of our election. And this is a matter of urgency to deal with because we have to make sure that the next election is conducted with integrity and without foreign interference. During your hearing um, with the Constitutional Come on, uh, girls. Scholars this week, you seem to hint that you're inclined to include some of the allegations in the Mueller report in, in, an article, in, in an article or possibly more of impeachment. I know that that is not, as you know, that is not a... That is not unanimous inside the Democratic caucus. Where are you on this? I, I, I'm reserving judgment. We're going to have to decide what to do after we see, after we have the evidence tomorrow, and after consultations with others in the caucus. There are a wide variety of factors that have to be considered, including um, um, the degree of proof, the degree of, uh, of confidence, and, uh, and where the members of the caucus are. Um, uh, we certainly have an abundance of evidence on, very, on various things. And again, the Republicans have virtually not contested this. All of that they have said, all that they have said is they oppose the process, but not the evidence. And by the way, if Pat Cipollone shows up tomorrow, you going to let him in? President's counsel? He has said he's not showing up. I understand. But if he just say changes his mind, him. this is the President of the United States, you never know. He might, might be tweeting in as you and I are speaking. Hey, I'm sending my lawyer tomorrow. You going to let him? We'd have to decide that. Uh, he is uh, guilty at this point of the most uh, blatant contempt of Congress. Who is guilty? The, the president? No, or Cipollone. Just for, Cipollone. Just, I don't mean as a crime, but okay. the, just the, 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 the contempt dripping from the two letters, the several letters he sent us. Uh, but that aside, uh, he has said he's not going to come, so I think that's a very academic question. They were invited, the president was invited to submit a testimony. So oh, my God. You should see the little Sabrina. So. She's got, she's got some members of some snowballs. On our feet, that probably adding 10 pounds to our weight. That's hilarious. Ben McAdams, activities from the 2016 election.
election should be left to voters in the 2020 election. Tom Malinowski, uh, New Jersey, if we impeach the president for everything he has done that is impeachable, it would probably take us until 2025. Well, he is certainly, he is certainly, uh, Tom is certainly correct in that. I, I, do you, look, do you think it's important for you to write an article of impeachment that has um, Democratic support? And if you don't think it has majority support, you won't write the article. I'm not going to say that, but I do think obviously we want the House to pass the uh, the, the resolutions that, that we put forward. Um, so that that's one factor to consider, obviously. But again, we also have to consider the fact that uh, we we have to call the president for his violations of the Constitution and for posing the, the, the considerable risk that he poses to the next election. Uh, I'm curious, though, the political divide that we have. This was something that concerned you 20 years ago. This is what you said 20 years ago. Um, actually, 21 years ago, almost to the, to the 21 years ago to the month. Impeaching a president when you have not got a broad consensus of the American people. A go! Agreement of almost everybody that this fellow has got to go because he's a clear and present danger to our liberty and to our Constitution. Without that, you cannot and should not impeach a president because to do so is to call into qu the question the legitimacy of all of our political institutions. Uh, that has been the conundrum of this impeachment process. I, I, I understand that, hey, you guys believe you're following the rule of law, but you have a wall of partisan uh, uh, objection to this. Does that matter? Well, of course it matters, but the polling now shows that 70% of the American people are convinced that the president has done something very wrong. 70% uh, aren't ready to oust him. Well, we're, we're not through with the process, but 70% of the American people have said that uh, and they understand the president done something very wrong. And we also have <laughs> she cannot a walk. Threat that uh, this well, president right. put himself repeatedly above the interest of the country and poses a threat to the integrity of the next election. That's not something we were talking about uh, 20 years ago. He poses a threat to the integrity of the next election if he's allowed to continue uh, to, to do what he's doing. What's the end consequence of impeaching him and, 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 him, and him being acquitted? How he will take well, acquittal? I don't know how we will take acquittal. I don't know if he'll be acquitted. The senators are going to have to decide. The House members first are going to have to decide. And then the senators are going to have to decide in the face of an abundance of uncontested evidence that the president poses a threat to our election, that he put himself, up, his own interests, above the interests of the country. Are they going to be patriots or are they going to be partisans? Let me ask you this. If he's acquitted, do you believe we'll have a fair election in 2020? I don't know. The president, uh, based on his past performance, will do everything he can to make it not a fair election. And that is part of what gives us the urgency uh, to proceed with this impeachment. Chairman Navarro, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, I mean, I don't want to, but this one Thank has you. got... Joining now from Houston is Republican Senator Ted Cruz of Texas. He sits on the Senate Judiciary Committee. Senate, Senator Cruz, welcome back to Meet the Press, sir. Good morning, Chuck. Good to be with you. Let me start with... Uh, Larger sort of, I want come to on, girls. Here through all of come on. Individual Chloe, it's come. Busy week in this come on. Larger forest here. For the third time, the White House enlisted help of one of your Republican colleagues to block a bipartisan resolution that you have been pushing to recognize Armenian genocide Go. that took place. Go ahead. You called out the administration for failing to block the completion of that Nord Stream pipeline from Russia to Germany. 71 House Republicans. It's not really snowing, is it? Resolution that basically said it would be fine if Russia came back into the G7 if they didn't uh, before they basically gave back Crimea to Ukraine. Uh, is it? Have you asked yourself why is it that this administration continues to publicly say tough things about Russia, but in their actions 